Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. Hey, it's Dave Asprey with Bulletproof Radio. Today's cool fact of the day is that if you have super low cholesterol, you might not actually be better off. The problem is that it's linked with higher rates of violence and suicide. It seems that lower cholesterol levels lead to lower serotonin levels, which can cause depression and aggression. You also might not like the fact that you'll have less testosterone and fewer of the other sex hormones, because apparently those are also useful for making you feel good. If you haven't had a chance to check out Bulletproof Executive Coach Training, you really should check this out. This is a program that is phenomenally life-changing, and it's for people who want to become more powerful executive coaches or life coaches. And there are medical professionals taking the training. There are people who are sports performance coaches and people who are working with CEOs and entrepreneurs to help them become better. We've already trained more than 160 people in this and we offer classes. These are in-person combined with online training classes. It takes about nine months. It's a real commitment to excellence, but you can, you can get access to this on the West Coast, on the East Coast, or even in Europe. So we're doing global training. So that you can have a set of tools that helps you upgrade a client's biology, upgrade their emotional ability, and their ability to execute in different domains of their life, including in business and at home. So the idea of being able to establish your own presence and then helping clients to have a bigger presence in the world is really cool. It's not nutrition training by a long shot, although we're gonna tell you how food affects performance. So check this out, and since you're watching this on YouTube maybe, Mark Atkinson, who's our head coach trainer, is here. We're not going to make this episode about that, but just if you haven't seen this, go to bulletproofexec.com slash coaching and look at what this could do for you as a coach. It's pretty amazing. Today, we're going to answer questions sent in via the blog and a new voicemail service that we have on the site where you can actually call and leave me a voicemail, which is really cool. So we'll actually be able to play your voicemail and then Mark and I are going to answer your questions about it. I get lots and lots of these questions every day, and I'm amazed at the number and variety of questions. I'll do my best to answer them. We categorize them, and you have a better chance of getting an answer if you leave a voicemail, but sometimes I just answer them on Facebook late at night and <laughs> do, do my very best. And this Q&A is a chance for whatever you ask to get broadcast to a large group of people. So if you're asking about you know, your left-handed, uh, one-fingered, uh, herpes simplex 24, that's probably not the right question for a public forum just because there are not that many people who have that made-up condition. But if it's something that's likely to affect a good number of people, or if it's a general performance question or something like that, or like a best practice question, these are things where I'd love to have more of them to talk with you about. And check out Bulletproof Forums. You'll get lots of answers there. And just head on over to bulletproofexec.com and click the Forums button. And there's thousands and thousands of posts full of info. And I guarantee you that the hundreds of thousands of people listening to this right now know a lot more than I do. So collectively, we're way smarter than Mark and I could possibly be. You can get to the forums at forum.bulletproofexec.com. And if you're a longtime listener, you already know Dr. Mark Atkinson. You've heard him on the show before, and if this is your first time tuning in, he's a British physician, an internationally renowned pioneer of integrative medicine, a personal development teacher, and he's our medical director at Bulletproof. So if you want to get a chance to hang out with Mark in person and with me, you should sign up for coach training. In the meantime, this is going to be an awesome episode because Mark and I always have the coolest conversations. These are the kind of things we talk about over dinner anyway, but now you get to listen in. All right. What's our first question here, Mark? Okay, question. Uh, this is from Roman Age 30 says, uh, Hey Dave, what's your opinion about cycling coffee? He gets panic attacks every time he thinks about instructing his brain to skip coffee. How important is it to actually skip coffee for how many days after how many days of consuming one cup of strong brew? What's your on off coffee? I have experimented with, with coffee cycling for a very long time, mm. and I don't really do it anymore. <laughs> the only time I go off coffee is if I'm going to do intense alpha brainwave training, yes. like in 40 Years of Zen, yep. where it's actually shown that caffeine can have a slightly negative effect on alpha brainwaves. Mm. Uh, although, surprisingly, I've done alpha brain training on caffeine, and what happens there is if you're really tired, caffeine improves performance, but my high levels, I, I've quadrupled my amplitude of, the, mm -hmm. of my brain waves. 
which basically means that my, if you, if you think of like a, a wave coming in, uh, like a surfing wave that's four feet tall, well, it, what if it was 16 feet tall? I learned how to do that for my brain waves. The problem is that on coffee, they're never more than twice as tall as, as the baseline when I first started training. Yep. So it is suppressive, but having energy when you're tired is also good. But here's the thing, with normal coffee, I used to, to drink one cup, and then two hours later, I'd get the crash that comes from all the other crap that's in coffee, and then I'd have another cup, and then I'd have another cup. So over the course of time, you're like one cup, two cups, three cups, four cups, five cups, right? And then like, okay, I gotta do a reset. And then I take it off and get headaches and take off for a week. And then I like do this vicious thing. That's what coffee cycling is to most people. Mm. With Bulletproof, I can drink one cup of coffee in the morning. And that's what I do, right? The last time I did uh, 40 years of Zen training, I came back, I said, you know, I'm gonna do half Bulletproof decaf beans. And you gotta be really careful with decaf because decaf beans are always moldier than regular coffee beans. Like, like you'll have worse crashes from decaf or worse sugar cravings or even the jitter feeling, even though there's no caffeine. Maybe caffeine isn't the source of jitter for most people. So what I would recommend doing there is you're gonna drink less coffee if you drink Bulletproof because you just don't need as much. And then it's pretty darn sustainable. And if you wanna drink more coffee, you can always do decaf. And if you wanna experiment with this, you can do decaf Bulletproof. You know that mold isn't a variable in that when you do it. So just try decaf for a couple of weeks you will feel a bit more of a buzz for the first two or three days when you go back on caffeinated coffee, but it's it's a very gentle thing compared to the normal like slam it in, uh, I'm just drinking random coffee kind of feeling. Like it, it's less abrupt. Yeah, so just to kind of you know reiterate, you know, I've I've played around with this as well. And mm -hmm. I think in in the attitude of self-experimentation, you want to mix up a bit. So I often use decaffeinated coffee. Um, and what I tend to find is that, you know, when you add healthy fats to that coffee and you know your brain octane oil you actually don't need more than one or two cups so that's the first thing the second thing is a lot of people who are into biohacking know about this hack where you actually add l-theanine and take l-theanine alongside your coffee as well or caffeine yeah, just, as well just a little capsule you don't need to mix it in it doesn't even taste that good yeah exactly yeah. it's just 100 milligrams of l-theanine so l-theanine is the amino acid that you find in tea and what it does actually is it has a synergistic effect with the caffeine and that can enhance your focus and attention. And the key thing with L-theanine is that actually it kind of creates a sensation of relaxation, but you're still alert as well. It, interestingly, theanine raises alpha brain waves 20%. That's it. <laughs> so yeah. if you were worried about the, this effect, you could actually just take theanine on top of, of coffee with or without caffeine. Yeah. And probably, and I don't have EEG f uh, studies about this, but you could probably fix it. And theanine is, is nothing special. Like it's a no. very common supplement. You sure. can buy it at any store. You can buy it on Amazon yeah. and uh, take it with or without coffee. You can also use it before you go to sleep. Yeah, uh, where it, it's it's pretty cool. Some people get lucid dreams from just L-theanine because of the increase in alpha. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, I was going to actually, <laughs> one thing's been in my mind recently has been about lucid dreams. So maybe oh, we'll cool. come back to that. There's a whole bunch of stuff I'm doing as biohack on lucid dreaming. So Sweet. we're going to come back to that. Okay. Okay, so I think we're, we're good in that. Just one thing to say is that if you are the kind of person you drink just regular coffee and you feel jittery afterwards, that's information. It's information telling you that you're probably drinking the wrong kind of coffee. It's poor quality. And so the first thing is you've got to switch to a very high quality brand, you've got to add healthy fats to it, um, play with actually reducing the amount of coffee uh, that you uh, consume. And if you really struggle to come off caffeine, i.e. your body's become habituated to it, um, then try the amino acid L-tyrosine. Now L-tyrosine, you take it in the morning, in between food, and what it does, it naturally increases your levels of catecholamines, which is things like dopamine, noradrenaline, adrenaline. So you actually help some people to ease them off that kind of jitteriness they get when yeah. they come off caffeine. There are two forms of L-tyrosine, and I prefer N-acetyl-D-tyrosine. Uh, have you ever played around with the two no, differences? And these are really good if you're low on your thyroid as well, which is why I first learned about tyrosine. Yeah. So getting more tyrosine if your energy is low can just amp you up. So taking yeah. that in the morning for yeah. a lot of people is beneficial. For yeah. some people, it doesn't seem to do anything. But yeah. Um, if you don't get a, the hit you want from plain tyrosine, the yeah. acetylated form is allegedly better. These are also like just order them on Amazon, like they're, yeah. they're all the same. Yeah, you can get them and they're pretty inexpensive. Yeah. Other thing is if you suffer from adrenal fatigue and so you know your kind of energy is pretty low most of the time, then taking L-tyrosine, just maybe 500 milligrams, mm -hmm. you can maybe do it once, twice a day, that will just energize you because you know the basis of high performance is consistent supply of energy, and L-tyrosine is a nice little hack, as is the L-theanine caffeine mix as well. Yep.
Okay, I think we're good on that. Okay, so um, let's take a... Yeah, so we've got um, someone who's actually called in with a uh, question. Hey, Dave, this is Irving from Colorado. Just wanted to ask you, how do you hack your motivation to do more things that you really want to do in your life? You know, uh, things that require tons of willpower and motivation to do. Thanks. It's, it doesn't take a lot of motivation to do things that you like doing. So the first thing that I do is I actually don't do things that I really dislike. <laughs> so then I don't have to waste willpower on making myself do things like, that are not my, what uh, Dan Sullivan would call it, unique ability. Uh, Dan Sullivan runs this interesting group called uh, Strategic Coach. He's coached uh, thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs over the past, I think about 40 years and really help me hone in on that stuff. So if I don't love it, I don't naturally feel intrinsically motivated to do it, there's probably someone else who can do it better than I can, and then I should be working with that person instead of beating myself around the head and shoulders. I remember I used to have this approach, especially when I was in my 20s, before I'd done a lot of the personal growth work that I've done. I was actually, I believed that the way to become strong was to address my weaknesses. And mm -hmm. so I, I would go out and uh, I remember project management. I, I can design a very elegant project management scheme, but I actually don't care about project management. It's not my core strength. I don't love it. So what I did is I said, let me enroll to become a certified project manager. And, and of course, I'm maximizing my willpower because I'm forcing myself to do stuff I don't like. Just it's like eating a kale salad. Like no one really loves to eat a kale salad. You're like, I can trick myself into telling myself I like it. Like, well, what if you just ate something that was more satisfying, right? Yeah. So what I did is I found the things that I, I love and and the other thing that hacks your motivation is is to be of service. And I gave a talk at the Bulletproof Conference about happiness. And one of the things that makes you happy, and this is a kind of long lasting built in happiness versus like I'm happy because I'm at a party, the short term happiness is uh, just knowing that you're helping other people. And you can do this whatever your job is. I guarantee you that, that you're getting paid to do whatever you do because it helps. And it might help in a broader scheme. Uh, you know, if, if your job is to stock groceries, uh, in fact, that gives you a lot of time to listen to podcasts, which is kind of cool. But look, people don't eat if there aren't products on shelves. It's really, really important. And you can either be like, I have a crappy job and I don't like my boss and the hours aren't any good. Or you're like, okay, like I'm, I'm helping people eat and that can radically shift your motivation. And when you shift your motivation, it shifts your happiness. And when it shifts your happiness, you tend to get raises, <laughs> you tend to get promotions and you tend to help all the people around you. And when you look at the world that way, it naturally is motivating. So it's not like you can like kind of self-flagellate with your willpower, but like I'm going to use my willpower to have more willpower. I'm going to motivate myself to do things I don't want to do. No, get them off your plate. That's what you do in order to be higher performing. And if you look at, at the things that have happened with Bulletproof over the past, the past few years, it's because I've very, very consciously quit doing stuff that I have any internal resistance to doing. If it's unnatural internal resistance, then I, uh, then I figure out what it is. And, and I hack that by, f by doing forgiveness, by uncovering if there's an old trauma that makes me avoid something. Uh, and then when I've gotten rid of all the crap in there, and most of that came from 40 years of Zen training and some other meditative practices, once you're done with that, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to have an authentic view of what's good for you and what you actually like and don't like. So after you've uncovered the unconscious programming that makes you think you don't like some things or like other things or avoid things that you actually do want to do where you have this weird push-pull, then you can really step out and say, all right, I'm getting this off my plate because I can do it. I just don't want to do it. And when you're only doing what you want to do, oh my God, that's great. And Sometimes you'll be doing things you don't want to do, but you know that they're the path to doing more of what you want to do, and that's just how it works. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. You know, one thing that we focus on in Bulletproof Coaching is this idea about really getting to the heart of what truly matters most to you. Yep. Um, and when you do that, making that the focus of your life um, and building the way you spend your day, what you attend to in work, the kind of focus. So mm -hmm. discovering what matters most to you, what lifts and energizes and inspires you, but also, in order to be motivated, you need physical energy. Uh, that's a fair point. You know, and, and so knowing how to hack your energy and supplying your, your body with good nutrition, taking the right kind of supplements, you know, maximizing the quality of your sleep, exercising efficiently, you need this reservoir mm -hmm. of energy and power to call upon, and then you put it to service in the things that matter most. Yeah. 
And then what, what you mentioned was about then really extraneous things that are not in your core competence, not a strength of yours, then you know, handing those out to others because life is too short. And a lot of people spend a lot of time focusing on things that do not matter, focusing on things they're not very good at, and that becomes a life depleting way of being in the world. And we see that there are millions of mm. people who wake up in the morning, they're not grateful, they're not excited, and it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And, and here's the thing that I didn't understand. And in fact, being a CEO has taught me more, even than like being a different other senior executive roles, you don't really have the vantage point. Every one of the things that I don't like, there's someone who absolutely freaking yeah. loves that, right? I don't like accounting, and apologies to my wonderful accounting team. I would stab my eyeballs with, with slightly dull accountant pencils if I had to be an accountant. And I studied finance at a big MBA school, right? I just don't like it. it it's never going to be appealing to me. But there are people who love it. They get lost in the numbers and they do analysis and modeling and bookkeeping. And you know, they go home fully satisfied. And that's really cool because mm -hmm. it's helpful. They, they have a job, they have stuff they love. And I have a job and I have stuff I love. Likewise, you take an accountant and you say, hey, could you go and do a podcast? They'd be like, absolutely not. And maybe there's an accounting <laughs> podcast where there's somebody who does both. But you get my point, right? <laughs> and you know, um, hang out with highly motivated individuals. That helps. Because you're kind of the people you hang out with, the tribe around you, you know, the people you keep company with, the way they are influences the way you are. And so surround yourself with people who are passionate and motivated. And then just kind of, if you find mm -hmm. uplifting and, and yeah. that supports you as well. There's, uh, you mentioned, you touched on it earlier, like having the right food and all that stuff. Yeah. And one of the core things that I've, I've given several talks about, including at the recent Bulletproof conference, is around hacking your willpower. If you have food cravings all the time, then mm. you're not going to have maximum willpower because you'll take like half your willpower just to tell yourself not to eat the junk foods that you're trying not to eat. If you change your diet around so that you don't have food cravings, you don't have hunger, well then all of a sudden you have more willpower. So that's at the core. And there's a, a stack in, in my head where I talk, uh, talk to myself about you know, how does all this work there's core cellular energy. This is mitochondrial stuff. This is the spark. Unfair advantage, that makes a huge difference. Upgraded aging, that makes a huge difference. The various exercise practices uh, that I recommend, high intensity interval training, uh, lifting heavy, that can actually grow new mitochondria, these, these kinds of things. Uh, brain octane, which gives a different source of, of fuel for the mitochondria versus glucose. It helps you have ketones in a very dramatic way that's that's different than coconut oil or different than just plain MCT oil, which, which is, is more commonly diluted with other stuff that doesn't really do that. Then what you end up with is this ability to have energy in the cell, but then you've got to have your hormones working, right? Because you don't have enough testosterone, you're not going to have motivation because that motivation to go out and reproduce the species can also be to go out and do whatever it is that you want to be motivated to do. And on top of that, there's neurotransmitters. You don't have enough dopamine, you don't have enough uh, adrenaline or epinephrine or norepinephrine uh, or even enough serotonin, your motivation is going to be broken. So this is why that stack of all that's important. And why would you avoid mold toxins in your environment, say moldymovie.com, or in your coffee <laughs> or the other things that you eat? Because they inhibit mitochondrial respiration. Less cellular energy translates to less motivation. This is just how it is. So when you have compromised energy, you can't remain focused. Yeah. Because by definition, you're going to be all over the place. And you'll notice that. Just, you know, take a typical day and just notice where your attention goes and how distracted you get. Make a change to your diet. Take the right supplements. Start working out efficiently. And then what starts to happen is that actually you become much more focused. Practice simple things like mindfulness, just paying attention to the present moment. Sometimes people who set themselves big, audacious goals, they focus on the future as the source of fulfillment, whereas actually... Fulfillment is intrinsic to this present moment when you're present to it. Yep. And so you want to find the balance. So you want to find the balance of being fully present, just enjoying, grateful for this moment. And that's why the, the practice of gratitude is so powerful. Starting your day with gratitude is such a great way to get focus and tap into motivation. So this is something we can talk about for yeah, a long time. But let's go to the next question. <laughs> I feel motivated. <laughs> Okay, this is from Marilyn, age 45. Um, I'm wondering about the charcoal. So I take the glutathione force in the morning and all recommend the vitamins in the afternoon or vitamins. Will the charcoal interfere or deactivate either of these? And when is it better to take it? 
So the charcoal that Marilyn's talking about is upgraded coconut charcoal. Yeah. This is the, the very finest particle size on the market and it's acid washed to be free of metals. So it's a slightly modified activated charcoal. And activated charcoal comes from what happens when you light something on fire and different charcoal can come from wood or whatever, but uh, coconuts, uh, where ours comes from, is the preferred source. And you, you basically light it on fire and then you take away the oxygen. And what you get is, is partially combusted charcoal. That's what activates it. And this creates huge amounts of surface area and a very strong negative charge. So it attracts positively charged molecules and it's used in agricultural settings to allow farmers to feed animals moldy food without the animals having the health problems, or at least as many of the health problems as they would normally get. In other words, animals can't gain weight when they eat moldy hay, but if they buy the cheap moldy hay and basically pour charcoal into it and these other toxin binders basically, they can get away with feeding even worse quality food. Mm. So that's not how it's used in humans, mm. although I don't see why not. Yeah. But the way it's used in humans in the emergency room is that they would pump activated charcoal in if you were poisoned. You've probably done that, I'm guessing. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So things like paracetamol, I mean, you know, activated charcoal has been used in medicine for over 100 mm -hmm. years. So, um, um, but um, the issue really here is that because it absorbs and binds to everything, you do have to take it away from your, from your supplements. It, and it, definitely away from glutathione and away from the supplements. And here's the weird thing. If you have a toxin exposure, well, the two things that you'd really want to take would be glutathione force because that helps your liver have more glutathione to process toxins, and you want to take activated charcoal to bind the toxins. So which ones would you take first? Well, it depends on the mechanism of exposure. If you just ate something, you're like, oh, that tasted like mold, mm -hmm. pound the charcoal. Absolutely. I, I've absolutely done that. Like That was a moldy berry, and I don't want that, I don't want my immune system reacting to that stuff. I don't want to absorb those toxins and allow my kidney and liver to process and, them. And you, and you can tell that. Yeah. There are times when you'll have a drink of something, you'll eat food, and you'll instantly know if you're present, yeah. you're sensitive to it, that something's mm -hmm. not right here. And that's why, actually, you want to take the activated charcoal with you wherever you go, if you travel, for example, yeah? <laughs> There's always a little vial of it with me. Yeah. And uh, especially if you go to restaurants, like it's just the thing to do. So one concern is, will it absorb the nutrients in food? And I'm not actually concerned about mm. that, and some people are. I think that if you took it with your meals regularly, it tends to bind to proteins, but it tends to bind to very strongly positively charged proteins, which tend to be the toxins. So that's not always the case, but I would feel comfortable if I took an activated charcoal capsule with, with my meals. It wouldn't bother me, except I also take charcoal. With, or I take supplements with my meals, so yeah. then I wouldn't want to do it. But when I travel, I typically take it before. And here's a yeah. neat trick. You do it a half hour before you eat, and then it's gonna be at the point in your GI tract where bile is excreted. That's right. And then when you eat the food, the body says, oh, it's time to secrete bile from the gallbladder. And when that happens, the bile can stick to the charcoal. And one of the mechanisms of action, in addition to binding to the toxins directly in the food, it can bind to bile and make you excrete the bile. And in the Bulletproof Diet, I wrote about how bile is a signaling molecule, but also bile turnover, when you increase the amount of bile the body makes, you can actually have a cleaner running system. So I'm a huge fan of just take it before the meal, then take the vitamins with the meal and you're not gonna have a problem. So that would be the ideal time to do it. And at least a half hour, hopefully an hour before glutathione force, you should be good to go. Okay, so all this talk of bile takes us on to our next mm -hmm. question. So uh, this is from Sylvia, age 57. Um, what are your recommendations for my 56 year old husband who does not have a gallbladder to become bulletproof? Uh, love the coffee. I had a bad stomach ache for a couple of days. Do you know the percentage of people who have gallbladders taken? I know it's a very common surgery. Yeah, yes, I do. So in America, there are 800,000 gallbladder removal operations every single year. Geez, that's even it bigger is. than I imagined. It is, it is mind-blowing. Every year? Every single year, there's 800,000 cholecystectomies. Yeah, I was... I so was, 20 years times 800,000... Assuming that people live 20 years after one of those, that's like 16 million people. That's a lot of people. Oh my it's, God, what do they do with 16 million gallbladders? <laughs> that's a really good question. Is there like a giant vat of gallbladders <laughs> sitting somewhere? <Yeah. laughs> you have to wonder, right? Like that's enough gallbladders yeah, to do something. With. <laughs> so um, it, it is such a common problem. Yeah. And, and traditionally what happens is, um, Someone has their gallbladder removed and they aren't given any advice. It's terrible. Which, ah. which is insane is because, you know, we, we produce this substance called bile. And, you know, it helps to emulsify and, and digest fats. And then, mm -hmm. of course, it helps to absorb fat-soluble um, vitamins, A, D, E, and K, 
So you need bile. Now, the whole thing with the gallbladder is it stores and concentrates that bile. It adds enzymes to it, mineral mm -hmm. salts, and then when we have a fatty meal, that bile gets released. But if someone's gallbladder has been removed, then they don't have that release. So it's not uncommon when people have the gallbladder removed, they have a fatty meal or, or drink with healthy fats in um, to experience some nausea, discomfort in their abdomen. So, so one of my best friends had her gallbladder removed a while back, and I was like, we can fix this. You don't have to do it. Yeah. But she decided to do it. A lot of these gallbladder surgeries probably aren't necessary. Yeah. Uh, you, you can you can address it from a holistic perspective. And I highly recommend if you're considering that surgery that you really explore all the options because it's hard to get a mechanical gallbladder because we sort of believe you don't need one. But that's because we have this this view of like, are you either alive or dead? But like, there's a mm. spectrum of performance between those two states. And having your gallbladder taken out isn't ideal. But if it does get taken out, one of the functions of bile is to do something called mycelization or to mycelize. This means to make tiny droplets of fat that are suspended in water. And it turns out, I know a thing or two about that because fat water is these nanoparticles even smaller than normal micelles. And what happens when you blend bulletproof coffee? You make micelles. Mm. <laughs> these are tiny droplets of fat suspended. And this is one of the reasons that putting butter, on, or even better yet, eating a stick of butter and drinking a cup of coffee does not feel the same as blending it it's because you're basically helping the body. Now, the other thing that's interesting is if you look at what, say, brain octane does, it doesn't get processed in the liver the way normal things do. It's not bile dependent. So what I would do with no gallbladder is, number one, with every meal for the rest of your life, unless it's a zero fat meal, I would take ox bile salts. They're, uh, an ox, you know, giant cow-like creature, will make several quarts of bile and they concentrate the bile. I actually don't know how they get it. I hope it's humane. I, I never thought of that, but mm. it could be painful. I don't know if there, there's like a bile milking machine. Don't even think about <laughs> it. I think they actually get it when they kill the animal, like because someone's going to eat it anyway. Sure. You might as, in fact, I'm 99% sure. Mm. But and I've never had grass fed ox bile, but I want to buy some. So if anyone has some, give me a call, right? <laughs> uh, be but, careful for what you ask. <laughs> I, I'd, I'd be interested, right? There must be a source. So. What you do then is uh, you get the stuff and they concentrate and you just take a capsule or two. Yeah. And you take That's betaine it. HCL, which yeah. also can help with this. And very important, a lipase. Non-fungal derived lipase. Most lipase on the market comes from aspergillus, which does not always create just lipase. It, it's one of the, the toxin forming molds. Not all aspergillus strains are toxin forming, but one of the uh, anti-aging physicians that I really respect uh, who's been on He's been a guest writer, and I believe a guest on the show, but certainly a guest poster on Bulletproof, is uh, Dr. Miller, uh, who previously practiced in Los Gatos and now practices in Half Moon Bay, and uh, Philip Lee Miller is his name. And he's the one who told me years ago, he's like, Dave, lots of my patients on fungal-derived digestive enzymes, they, they just don't do as well. I've had to take them off and put them on animal-based enzymes or plant-based non-fungal-derived enzymes. So in your case here, You'd want to take lipase, which is the fat digesting enzyme. You want to take betaine HCL, which increases stomach acid. And try bulletproof coffee without the butter. Just the, the brain octane oil. And to make it mix in a little bit, throw in a couple of tablespoons of upgraded collagen. Collagen doesn't change the taste of coffee, but it can add a little bit of, uh, of body to it, I guess you could say, which is nice when you're doing it with just the brain octane. And I think what you're going to feel is really, really good. You might also be able to have a little bit of, of, say, vitamin E and other oils like that, krill oil, if you take stuff like that, take those at the same time, take the lipase at the same time, and take an ox bile. And you're gonna feel very, very different, and I would expect you to not have the bad stomach ache. So I know that this will be transcribed, all of these podcasts are transcribed. You'll be able to take that section, if you go to the transcript, click on it, it'll take you to just this part of the video, and you can share this with all of your friends who also don't have gallbladders. I've, I get this question like once a week and it just drives me crazy and it just breaks my heart when someone who shouldn't be eating a high fat meal without ox bile does it. So your job, if you have no gallbladder right now, go online, search for ox bile and order yourself six bottles of yeah. it and always have it with you for every meal for the rest of your life and you'll probably get at least 10 more years out of your life. I'm not kidding. Yeah, it's going to make such a difference to the quality of your husband's life when he starts doing this. And then when he, when, when he sees that positive experience, tell others who have had the gold badge removed so, as well. And Sylvia, kind of screw that noise. It's not about your husband's life. It's about your life. Because if your husband's happier, you're going to be happier, right? Like, so let's face it. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so uh, I think we're going to listen to uh, a question there. All right. Hi, Dave. 
This is Gigi from MaxGigiCare.com. My husband has high blood pressure. A lot of the readers of my blog also report this problem. If you had high blood pressure, what would be the top three hacks that you would do for yourself to prevent you from having to take traditional high blood pressure medications? I appreciate your time. Take care. Bye. Top three hacks for blood pressure right here. Number one, you've got to take supplemental magnesium. And I like magnesium that ends in eight. Not the letter eight, but the words A-T-E, as in citrate, malate, ascorbate, all the other forms of magnesium. You can get ones that have mixed forms. This is really, really important. 90, 95% of people are magnesium deficient. It's rampant. Also, potassium. You can get potassium citrate, and you can take that with magnesium because it turns out that they need each other to enter the cells. So just doing those two things, not lowering sodium, but increasing those things, so the ratio of those is there, can be very, very beneficial. The other hack, so, so number one is magnesium, number two is potassium, number three is the Zona Plus device, and I think we have it on Bulletproof.com. If not, you can find it out there, and I've interviewed the CEO of Zona on Bulletproof Radio. Zona is a little device, in fact, hey Brock, is there, is, it's over there, will you bring me that thing? Thanks Brock. All right, now you won't be watching this on YouTube because I'm actually showing you what this thing looks like. And if you go to bulletproofexec.com slash YouTube, that'll take you directly to the YouTube channel so you can get this. That's bulletproofexec.com slash YouTube. And this Zona thing is a little sort of strangely phallic looking device where you turn it on and it tells you to squeeze. And that's all you do. You squeeze for about four minutes or eight minutes a day. So I'm, I'm, it says squeeze as hard as you can. And I started squeezing at the end. So my score is bad. But what it does is it trains your vascular system. And somewhere around 80% of people who use this on a regular basis resolve their high blood pressure without medication. That is a claim from the makers of this device. And it's actually validated in studies. It's an incredible piece of biohacking technology. It costs a few hundred bucks. But if you wanted to hack your blood pressure and you just did magnesium, potassium, and some Zona training, I think the vast majority of people could really change things. Yeah, so um, a whole bunch of other pieces of advice. So with high blood pressure, always ask the question, why have I got high blood pressure? So, you know, if you're carrying extra weight, you're overweight, you're obese, then that means, you know, reducing your carb intake, increasing healthy fats, um, some moderate um, amounts of protein. What, what if it's your mother-in-law? Any recommendations? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, as it happens. Um, so, uh, so losing weight, really important. Interestingly, a lot of people listening to this will be insulin resistant. So we know that when you're insulin resistant, it actually causes retention of sodium in the body that mm -hmm. kind of drives high blood pressure as well. So, you know, insulin resistance, again, you've got to bring down unhealthy levels of carbohydrates. Take supplements like alpha lipoic acid, um, mm -hmm. vitamin D, chromium, they all help as well. Um, some, a very small percentage of people have kidney issues that needs to be addressed, um, as is hypothyroidism. Stress is a big issue. And you know what's interesting about blood pressure and stress? It's less to do with everyday stress, much more to do with repressed stress. So those people who go around, they're kind of tense all the time. They kind of feel stress, but they're not really in touch with it. Mm -hmm. they off, they're a sub, that's a subpopulation who tend to have a lot of high blood pressure. Yeah. So Admit that you're stress intense, a regular kind of relaxation practice, whether that's progressive muscle relaxation, meditation is really important as well. In fact, here's an interesting thing. We're probably beyond the top three hacks, but if you get the app, it's a bulletproof app called Stress Detective, you need a, a heart rate monitor for this. They run anywhere from like 20 to 60 bucks for a good heart rate monitor. And you put this thing on and then it'll talk to your iPhone or your iPad all day long and it'll show you your state of stress right now. Yeah. When I started doing this kind of work, I had no clue when my body was in a state of fight or flight. I didn't understand when I was stressed or not stressed because like the wires, like the signal's there, but if you haven't mapped and identified the signal, you just don't know. And it's not natural for you to necessarily know what that is. Like, oh, there's something going on in my body, but it's, it's, it's noise unless you realize that there's a signal in the noise. So you're like, wait a minute, during this meeting, like I look at my device and it tells me what my body's doing. And after a little while, like, oh, the feeling in the body is that. And then all of a sudden you don't need the device anymore. But that's called stress detective. You can get it on the Apple store. That's yeah. Right. And, you know, kind of uh, just acknowledging your stress and say a lot of people don't know the stress all the time. Yeah. But if you have a lot of mind chatter and your mind's all over the place and you become irritable and kind of tense and you get tension in your shoulders, that probably means you're, you're stressed. So that's a big piece of yeah. it. 
There's also a device that I've used a lot with, with patients in the UK called Respirate. I don't know if you've heard of oh, this. Oh, yeah. It's, it's very related to the heart math thing. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like a breath training device. Mm -hmm. and, and basically what we know is that you can trigger the body's relaxation nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, mm -hmm. by prolonging your expiration, your out-breath. And so what it does, this device teaches you how to do that. And, and kind of like um, um, the Zona Plus, it's got some really good research behind mm -hmm. it. It's FDA cleared for yeah. use as an adjunctive treatment for high blood pressure. So you can just put that in the search engine and you'll find yeah. it. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, when I was a CTO at Basis, the, the wristband company that gets heart rate from the wrist, uh, we actually looked at that. And you can absolutely, just by looking at space between heartbeats, you can tell how much someone's breathing. So you can use breath to change heart rate variability, which is... Yeah turns off stress or the other way around, which yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot you can do for high blood pressure and uh, there's nothing wrong with high blood pressure medication if you've tried everything else, but the vast majority of people on high blood pressure medication are probably not helping themselves. And if you're on this medication and it drops your blood pressure too low, you can actually get like senile cognitive dementia or you can have all sorts of problems that come from lack of oxygen and blood flow in the brain. Mm -hmm. So there are some substantial number of people in retirement homes who are actually way below their, their real capacity Absolutely. because of blood pressure meds. So this is an, a problem. They're overprescribed. And why would you not train someone with a Zona device? Why would you not do magnesium first? That should be the medical standard of care, not starting out with drugs. Like that's not okay. Drugs are fine. But that's not where you start. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. There's one final thing I want to say, because not a lot of people really understand this. It's about pre-hypertension. So pre-hypertension is like the, the systolic blood pressure. It's the top blood pressure figure is between 120 and 139. And if you have that, your doctor will say, that's okay. We're just going to monitor every single year because and wait for it to progress to hypertension. If you have pre-hypertension, start now, start everything we just shared with you, start implementing because what the research has shown over the last couple of years is that you're still at higher risk of developing stroke and cardiovascular disease. So pay attention to your blood pressure. And as Dave said, if your blood pressure is too low, that's also a problem because your brain's under perfused. It mm -hmm. can also be a symptom of significant adrenal fatigue as well. So blood pressure is really important, but start natural, start with the biohacking technology first and then utilize medications if need be, but yep. not as frontline. All right, I like it. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this is Jeremy, age 28. With all the clear benefits of medium chain triglycerides, I was wondering about short chain triglycerides, specifically butyric acid. Do shorter chain fats increase the benefit the same? Are they different? Regarding butyric acid, what's the best form, the butyric acid or the sodium butyrate? Well, that's a pretty technical question, but the first question is, there, the clear benefits of MCTs are not clear at all. There's four kinds of MCTs that are, that are marketed and present, and actually two of them are not useful for the purposes that we're using them for. The shortest chain one, C6, is a contaminant that's left, and you'll find it at, at several percentages depending on, on what type of MCT concentration technology was used. C6 causes gastric irritation, and it's one of the most common sources of disaster pants in people who aren't using the triple distilled stuff that I make. So if you have digestive distress, there's a theory, C6 is a problem. So this is an MCT that is not useful, but it is present in MCT, because it is technically an MCT. The other one that's a big problem is C12, or lauric acid. It's dirt cheap, it's abundant in coconut oil, and it's actually good for you. You can eat a spoon of coconut oil, get some coconut milk sometimes, and you'll get lots of lauric acid. The problem is that lauric acid is chemically called a medium chain triglyceride when it was named like 100 years ago, but it biologically is a long chain fat. It's processed the same as stearic acid and all these other things. So there are not clear benefits of MCTs because MCT doesn't really mean anything. It's been misused and mismarketed. Coconut oil companies are like, oh, we're 62% MCT. No, there's really only two MCTs that are worth anything from increasing energy the way we're talking about from increasing ketones. And that's C8 and C10. And that's what I put in XCT oil. And you need to make sure that there aren't some of the other impurities that make it in there. And then the one that's the gold standard is C8 MCT because that's the one that's giving us the most ketones and the most energy the fastest. Unfortunately, it's also the rarest MCT. So when you talk about clear benefits of MCTs, you gotta understand half the MCTs are not of clear benefit, especially for increasing performance the way we're talking about. So, Given yeah. that, let's talk about short chain fats. 
So the way we measure fats, we have the number of carbon atoms on a fat. So you can have these longer chain fats, like uh, stearic acid is a very common one, like lauric acid, which is at the upper end of the medium chain fats, it is technically a long chain fat, even though it's mismarketed as a medium chain fat. And then you come down into these shorter chain fats. And on the shorter chain fats, butyric acid is the most famous one. And if you listen to any Bulletproof Radio episode where we talk about gut health, we always talk about butyric acid. And butyric acid is useful in the body in two situations. The one we all know about if we're into biohacking and gut health and all that other kind of weird stuff that you probably don't talk about at the dinner table is that bacteria in your gut make butyric acid for you. You eat carbohydrates, the bacteria convert the carbohydrates into fat and your body uses it for energy. What, when you eat carbs it makes fat? It actually does, and butyric acid is a very short chain fat, shorter than six carbon molecules. And do you remember how many carbon uh, molecules? C4. It is C4, yeah. I was yeah. 90% sure. Yeah. So this is basically one, this is a half the length of brain octane oil. And butyric acid helps to stop inflammation in the gut. And that's really interesting. And it also appears to be a primary fuel source. What a lot of people don't know though is butyric acid is also formed by collagen. In fact, some people call collagen animal starch because in the gut, it is acted on by bacteria and it does become butyric acid. So if you're doing a lower carb approach, increasing collagen levels, can still make sure you have butyric acid in the lower gut. But there are studies that I cited in the Bulletproof Diet where having exogenous or external source butyric acid in the stomach, in the upper part of the GI tract, has other benefits that are not there from the stuff that's made on board by bacteria. In other words, you wanna make it and you wanna eat it. And what's present in Bulletproof Coffee? Butyric acid. In fact, why is it called butyric acid? Butter, butyric. It's actually named that after butter because butter was one of the first places where they discovered this. It's also common in cheese, but cheese has a lot of other casein and other things in it that make cheese less ideal. So if you were not to just eat some butter to get your butyric acid or you wanted to get more, and butyric acid is also a treatment for uh, some antifungal things like some of the medium chain oils as well, then you can take two capsule forms. You can take either sodium butyrate or butyric acid. They both smell like sweat socks. They are truly putrid. If you put a butyric acid capsule or sodium butyrate, it doesn't really matter, you put it into your uh, vitamin bag, the whole thing will smell like blue cheese. It's disgusting. It's really and your breath won't smell when you're done taking it though, at least, but your hand will smell if you hold the vitamins. I've also experimented with putting it in my coffee and oh my God, if you wanna mm -hmm. just like have the worst experience of your life, try and drink a cup of butyric acid bulletproof coffee. It's, it's horrible. So anyway, long answer. What's the best form? Whichever one is most available to you. I don't believe there's any difference that I've ever come across in literature from consuming butyric acid or sodium butyrate. Yeah, I haven't found, I haven't found any difference. I, looked, right. I couldn't find anything. Cool. All right, did I complete that one? Any any other thoughts? No, you you completed it. It's um, <laughs> it's all there. Okay, cool. Okay, okay. Next question from Kevin, age twenty seven. Uh, what if any modifications would the bulletproof diet need for someone trying to build muscle rather than losing fat? Well. One of the things you might wanna do is increase the amount of protein in there. The Bulletproof Diet is designed to be a moderate protein diet. And it's a moderate protein diet because excessive protein is triggered, uh, it is a trigger of inflammation. So excessive protein, particularly the wrong amino acids, can cause lots of things that are not good from an aging perspective. I'm talking about cysteine and methionine and tryptophan. Those are three amino acids that are very common in muscle tissue. So if you wanna be putting on muscle, if you're older and you're dealing with muscle wasting or sarcopenia, then yeah, you wanna up your protein a little bit so that you're maintaining or even building muscle mass. But if you're young and you, you wanna you know, be swole, well, then you need to look at what are the long-term costs of that. And there are some from, say, excessive whey protein. Keep in mind, I manufacture a high-end whey protein, it's called upgraded whey, that also has some XCT oil powder added to it and it has some colostrum added, so you get these really big effects. But the label says two or maybe four tablespoons a day, not more. So the modification would be add protein, but don't add protein that is going to increase this amino acid ratio beyond what your body needs to put on muscle. And that means you can add some extra collagen into your diet, and when you use the upgraded collagen, you can get the protein count up, but you aren't necessarily taking a lot of whey and, and things like that. So what you could also do, more eggs, more steak, but just be careful about excessive protein. And if you shift yourself to using protein as an energy source instead of fat, 
you're not making yourself build muscle that way. You're actually increasing the load on the kidney and liver for no good reason. So maximum protein that's going to muscle building. And you probably need more carbs. If you're working out all the time and you're exercising a lot, having some carbs in the evening, still moderate carbs. You don't have to be in deep ketosis all the time. You can be in that Goldilocks zone of ketosis where you're not at zero or one or 0.1 ketones, but you don't have to be in two or three on a blood meter either. You can be just at that level of 0.5. I can hit 0.5 if I have a whole bunch of sushi with rice the night before. I come all the way out of fat burning mode, out of ketosis, and then in the morning, I have a bulletproof coffee with two tablespoons of brain octane and a tablespoon of butter in it, or two. It doesn't really matter how much butter. I blend that, and I drink it, and a half hour later, if I do a blood stick, I'm going to do a 0.5 or a 0.6 on my ketone meter. The amount of brain octane you need could be different, but this is how dramatically that stuff can affect your ketone levels. Try doing that with coconut oil. It doesn't work. You cannot do that in the morning. It's going to take you a couple days. So this is that rapid moving into that. When you do it, you get the hunger suppression. You get the stable energy. So if you want to put on muscle, having stable energy is really important. And getting some carbs, which are a part of muscle building in the evening, is a good idea. Follow the bulletproof recommendations for carbs. Yeah, spot on. Okay, great. Sweet. Okay, next question. Um, Brie, age 23. First of all, you're amazing. Uh, Okay, you're amazing. And... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and your podcast has changed my life, including my career choice. I want to receive an online holistic nutrition certification to start helping others. Do you have any suggestions on credible agencies? Thank you so much for all that you do. Check out the Institute for Transformational Nutrition uh, run by my friend Cynthia Pasquala. That's a, a really good thing. Uh, there's more medical focused stuff that uh, Mark Hyman's working with. Uh, I believe that's IFN. Is yeah, Mark's. Institute of Functional Medicine. Yeah, right? and not knowing Bree's background, I'm guessing Bree's 23, so probably not a physician already or something like that. Uh, so th- I would definitely look at ITN there. Yeah, and the, the, the IFM actually have yeah. um, introduced a, a coach training program to teach people the, co- the kind of functional medicine model. So okay. that, that would be one option. That would be an option as well. And you could also look at the Bulletproof Executive Coach Training. It's not a nutrition certification, uh, but it definitely includes some nutrition and it includes the other things that you go into building high performance. So depending on if your goal is holistic nutrition to focus specifically on food, check out ITN. And if you wanted to go for a broader, like a a human performance coaching entrepreneurs versus coaching people on how to eat, uh, that would be more on the Bulletproof side of things. And there are a ton of people who decide to do Bulletproof after they're already Certified nutritionists right. after their in fact, do you know the percentage like just ballpark? I'm guessing like half the people who oh, are already may, certified. Maybe right? maybe two thirds. So two thirds of the people who are training with us currently, they're already already a coach, already a certified um, nutritionist. Yeah. And yeah, what they want to do is they just want to upgrade their skills, mm-hmm. and they want to be able to appeal to a much broader audience. But also, when they work with a client, work at multiple levels. So the yeah. physical, the emotional, the spiritual, the relational, the performance side of it as well. So yeah, yeah. So we, we, we get a lot of people coming to us who already have some background, but you know, you're still going to learn a lot about nutrition training with us because that that's a yeah. you know, it, it un, it's, it's the underbelly of the program, which is that in order to perform well you need to have good nutrition and have consistent energy. So we'll give you some knowledge, but the certification, I'm assuming, Bree, from your question, that you're talking about a certification that might allow you to have some credentials. Mm. Uh, There are various ways you can become a a certified nutritionist, and you can actually use a CN after your name and, and some other things like that. In fact, in Canada, if you have one of those, you can actually accept government uh, Medicare, Medicaid kinds of things. I just mixed my two government agencies, but <laughs> whatever the Canadian medical system stuff pays you for. Uh, so in the US, there are similar arrangements. So getting that uh, certification and looking at the value of the certification in terms of whether it allows you to practice formally versus having more of a coaching contractor client relationship, mm-hmm. you really need to dig in on that. And I, I actually looked a few years ago at becoming a, a certified nutritionist because like, okay, it's one of those kind of helpful things to have Mm -hmm. and decided against it because it was actually a lot of work and I actually bought all the course materials from one of the groups and uh, it was, I actually don't remember the name of it, but it was like, here's why to adopt a high grain vegan diet. I'm like, I don't want the certification. I don't care if it gives me some letters after my name. It's actually wrong. Uh, So I I basically round filed that stuff. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, b- before you choose um, a course to do, see if you can speak to graduates of that course, you know, kind of, you know, uh, you, you, you want to find out how the course was for them, how they're applying it in real life, you know, um, so d- 
do you, do you make the time when you decide on the course to speak to people who have been through the training as well? Okay, okay. I think we're good. All right. uh, okay, let's take a, another question. Hey, Dave, uh, Bulletproof rocks. Uh, thank you for everything you do. Since Albert Viotto's first podcast, I've been practicing one day a week of fasting, only BP coffee, bone broth, and water. I'm interested in your thoughts about that as opposed to the protein fasting described in the book. So, again, thanks for everything you do and uh, can't wait for the conference. Bulletproof intermittent fasting is a, a new creation. And this is the idea that says, look, intermittent fasting drives ketone formation at a certain rate. Doing no protein, just grass-fed butter, upgraded coffee beans, and very specifically brain octane oil, you can get higher ketones more quickly. And so if you do a, a bulletproof intermittent fast, you basically skip breakfast, have only these fats in the morning, you get all the energy that your body wanted, but you didn't get all the protein and sugar digestion machinery working, so then all those enzymes go to work on the body, and you're getting a lot of the benefits of, of skipping breakfast entirely, which has benefits if you do it some of the time. If you do it all the time, it tends to make you a little bit adrenal overloaded. You tend to get angry and cranky, and um, it's, uh, it's, it's actually kind of obvious when someone's been intermittent fasting every single day for a long time, because usually their adrenals are burned out and they're probably mad at the world. And when you do one day a week of the bulletproof protein fasting, this is a very, very little known kind of trick. Uh, and my friend uh, Josh Witten was the one who really helped me do it right. I'd experimented with it, but I was still getting too much protein really from avocado, even coconut milk has some protein in it. You gotta be under 15 grams of protein a day. And this is the idea of a day where you have zero protein or as close to zero as you can get. And when you do that, you end up getting just this, this next day, you feel really good. And what that does is that causes all of these enzymes that would have gone to digesting protein to go into your cells and actually work on a process called autophagy. And it then processes the cells and it gets rid of cellular gunk. So you get cleaner burning cells in other days. And, and you'll feel a big difference. If you get the Bulletproof Diet Roadmap, which is free, you can download it from the website. And it's, in, it's explained fully in the Bulletproof Diet book. On the top right of that, there's actually a diagram. And I say, here's what to eat when on the bulletproof protein fasting day. So if you have all these things you can do, but what if on that day you wanted to do bone broth instead of doing a protein fast? There's nothing wrong with any kind of fast for a short period of time. And a bone broth fast seems like an interesting idea. However, bone broth has protein in it. And it's not going to give you the same autophagy effects that you're gonna get from having zero protein. You're probably gonna to get too much protein in it. You're gonna get collagen protein from the bones and you're gonna get some healthy fats and lots of minerals. That said, is having a day a week or however often where you only have bone broth, it's like a, a light day where you're, you're giving your digestive tract a break. It, is bone broth healing for the gut? Yeah, it is. So I'd fully support you doing it, but it won't have the same effects on autophagy as basically skipping uh, skipping the protein for the day entirely. So it's kind of a long answer. And if you're listening to this and you know, you're not Ed, it's really worth thinking about what would happen if one day this week, I wasn't hungry at all, but I just had some vegetables. I even had like a good number of carbs, like white rice, which is relatively low in protein. And I had zero protein. How would I feel the next day? And the answer is amazing. And you can actually feel tighter. Like, like literally you feel it around your midsection. Like, wow, this is kind of cool. So check out the Bulletproof Diet book. There's even a couple of recipes in Bulletproof the cookbook. Got a quick plug, bulletproofcookbook.com. This is just coming out. It's awesome. And in those recipes, there's a couple in there that are specifically for here's how to have no protein. So just give this a try. It's worth experimenting with. You don't have to do it every week the way I recommend. Do it once a month, but you'll feel a difference. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's move on to the okay. next question. So Elijah, age 21, in your fantastic book, I assume the Bulletproof Diet, you mentioned the idea of having fruit after a meal. To my understanding, fruit craves direct access to the small intestine and eating fruit on anything other than an empty stomach will cause the fruit to have to wait in line behind any greater digestive necessities, causing it to ferment and become prime a food source for bad gut bacteria. Uh, what do you know about incompatible food combinations interfering with each other in the digestive process? 
you know, early on in the process of hacking my digestion, I spent like two years playing around with food combining. So this, did I. I, did, I, okay. I just, we, we've all been there, right? <laughs> There's all these complex rules and it's almost like a Rubik's Cube of, you oh, I can't have watermelon here. You know what? It doesn't really matter. Like, like there are some things which are just not a good idea. Like, yeah. There's the idea of fermentable carbohydrates, you know, that you'll get really bad gas if you have too much protein and some like highly like beans and uh, yeah. and eggs together. Like, yeah. okay, we know yeah. what's going to happen there, right? Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, I, I just don't see an issue behind this waiting in line behind greater digestive necessities. Yeah. I don't think that's born I'll, out of I'll, research. I'll give a little bit of background on this. So the idea of food combining was proposed way back in 1930s by Dr. Hay. And, and basically Dr. Hay said a couple of things. First of all, um, eat alkaline forming foods. In his in 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 his well, that's oh, fruits right. and vegetables, and, and they're alkaline, which means if you light them on fire, the ashes that are left are alkaline, right. even if the food yeah. itself is acidic, right? That, that's exactly right. So the <laughs> alkaline foods, um, stay away from processed food. That that's a good one. Thumbs up. Uh, don't mix, and this is this is the big one. Don't mix foods that are rich in carbohydrate with foods that are rich in protein as well. And the idea was you keep fruits away from everything else. So. You know, like anyone who's into nutrition, most people have experimented with this. And you know what? For for a minority of the population, I think it matters. And and, and they tend to have <laughs> small intestinal bacterial yeah. overgrowth, dysbiosis, kind of gut bacterial problems. They have you know, when, when you know, if and you'll know this. You know, if you have fruit and then you become very windy and belching and burping and that if, you know um, uh, and you feel uncomfortable and bloated then there's almost certainly a dysbiosis. The, the technical term for that that my six-year-old loves is if, if you fart like a machine, then you know. <laughs> that you are. And you know, fruit does have to be restricted. There's no doubt about it. But you know, for the majority of people, it's just not much of an issue. And you know, the kind of fruits that are recommended in Bulletproof Diet are things like kind of blueberries, which are low fermentable fruits. They, they, they yeah. sit really nicely at the end of the day. So in summary, for a small percentage of the population, it's an issue, but that's more, it's more about them and the bacteria that are sitting inside of the gut. And that's what needs to be addressed. For the rest of us, it's really not much of an issue. I kind of look at food combining as a, a really elegant theory. I, I don't think it works very well for most people. Yeah. And it can become one of those orthorexic things. We're like, I have to, I have to combine this stuff properly, but it doesn't do anything. Yeah. So you've got yeah. to look at, okay, try any food combination diet you want and yeah. see if you can tell the difference. And if you could tell a difference, you probably had SIBO and you could have just followed the SIBO protocols, which are pretty well understood. Yeah. I almost certainly had SIBO a long time ago. Yeah. I also had toxic mold uh, exposure. I was living in a moldy house and I had SIBO and there, I believe there's correlations between yeah. us. Do experiment with your diet, but if you're continuing to experiment for beyond a couple of weeks and months, then that, that's, that's moving towards obsession. Ultimately, what we want is great tasting food that fuels us, provides us full throughout the day, we feel great mm -hmm. upon, enables us to perform, and then almost we want to kind of put the food in the background. Yeah. We want to be putting our attention on life and, and doing the things that really matter, and the food support that. Yeah. But if food is always primary, and that's a distraction, obsessive, compulsive, then, then that's really you know, a yeah. challenge, an issue. And, and you should eat so that you don't have food cravings. If you have a food craving, it's your fault. And it means you did something. You might not know what it is, but it is your fault. Like, like I'm directly blaming you for your food cravings. <laughs> you got to change what you're putting into your body so you'll have less cravings, and that takes away this obsession with food. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's uh, take our final question. Ciao, sono Davide, and I am from Italy. I'm listening to your podcast since 2012, and you really have changed my life. I know that the 30 years of Zen training is the most effective training program for EEG, but I have seen you have also a brain master unit. How would you compare these two systems? Have you used a special protocol for the Brain Master Brain Avatar training program? Have a nice day. Ciao. David, thanks for your questions and thanks for calling in all the way from Italy. Do you know that 40 years of Zen is, is the top level neurofeedback training that I recommend? But you also noticed in one of my videos I have a Brain Master unit. I have a, a two channel Brain Master Atlantis unit, which I bought specifically so I could do something called. Uh, slow cortical potential training. And these are very advanced ways of training the brain. You glue electrodes to the brain. This is EEG neurofeedback. And you get an electrical signal off the brain. You process it somehow in a computer and you play the signal back. And I actually don't use the Brain Master actively. And I, I've got a bunch of different software packages for it. But the more I've used neurofeedback, I started doing this in 1997. And I've had my own machine ever since then. 
it is a very powerful technology. You can take a very healthy brain with the wrong neurofeedback protocols in a couple hours of training, you can induce post-traumatic stress disorder. You can actually cause PTSD in someone who doesn't have it, where they have chronic anxiety. You can destroy someone's ability to sleep a full night. So this is one of those things that is, uh, it, it's almost like doing surgery on your brain. It, it's, it's very important. So I don't recommend for the average brain hacker that you go out and, and pick up a brain master unit. However, if you were to work with a trained, very experienced neurofeedback person, and you wanted to do something along a slow cortical potential or addressing some specific things, uh, that kind of technology, just essentially, this is broad spectrum, clinical grade EEG neurofeedback, can be really, really helpful. What I recommend for home use is something that we carry on the Bulletproof website. It's the Neuroptimal system. And I recommend the Neuroptimal system because it has positive effects. It is the most affordable form of neurofeedback that's at, at the high end of the system. You can get the, the Muse headbands and the Melon headband and things like that, which are a couple hundred bucks, but they're a very different level of signal analysis than you get from these, these things with proper electrodes. And they're, they're coming. Like I, I look forward to the day when you can just kind of throw a hat on and it gets mm. your whole brainwave. But until we're there, the Neuroptimal unit allows you to tell your brain when it's about to change, say from an alpha, the relaxed alert kind of learning state into a beta state or into a dreamy theta state. So if you wanted to become better at sticking in this state of kind of relaxed learning, it'll tell you when you're about to flop out of it. And the brain itself gets the knowledge, not really you. So then you might go into a theta state where more intuition and creativity happen, the kind of, kind of daydreaming state. And then you'll stay in that state for longer. So you have more control of where your brain is. That's why I'd say Neuroptimal, which comes out to about 18 bucks a session, but you buy several hundred sessions, enough for your family and probably your neighbors and friends, you can share a unit. At about 18 bucks a session, this is just the cheapest thing I know. Most people though, wanna find a very well-qualified neurofeedback practitioner in their area and go do it. The problem there, you're spending about 100, 150 bucks a session and you've got to drive there and go do it, and it's pretty burdensome. You don't see a lot of results until you've had about 10 sessions, and some people need like 40 sessions of any kind of neurofeedback. With uh, 40 years of Zen, it's, it's many sessions all kind of crammed together, so you spend a week, or now we have a new one where you're doing a double training. You have to have special supplementation, but we can do a double training in five days, so every day you're, you're in twice doing the training, and it's, it's really exhausting. It's like running a marathon with your brain. So that is uh, unfortunately just very expensive right now. And I, I don't know how to make it more affordable, but I'm really working on that. In the meantime, the offering for everyone who wants to just have better emotional regularity and a much better return on investment, are you gonna spend an hour meditating? Or are you gonna spend an hour with the computer telling your brain when it's in a certain state or about to move to another state? I, I just know, and I think you can tell from thinking about this, that if the goal of meditation is to, is to still the mind, you can, you can do this by yourself. You can sit in a cave and wear a robe and fast and get a lot of progress over the course of years. Or if every time your brain does it wrong, you kind of smack the brain with a little, hey, pay attention, hey, pay attention, you can just have faster progress. I would not be where I am now as a human being, as an entrepreneur, as a father, if I hadn't had computers helping me. Like my brain is fundamentally different. My ability to, to do things, my ability to serve other people is radically different because of 40 years of Zen and because of all this other stuff I've done. And that's why I even went to the trouble of making it available. And it's mostly just for people that I coach personally and a few other people who are really, really motivated for that. In the meantime, what is available is Neuroptimal. Share it with two or three friends and becomes the most affordable neurofeedback that'll actually make a difference without inducing problematic states. Yeah, just to add my, yeah, my, my, my experience, Zen, yeah. I've done 40 years of Zen uh, quite a few times now. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I've meditated for like 20 years and, and I'm with you on that. It's like, you know, the way we evolve rapidly is through feedback. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is in life. And so the life's constantly providing feedback. Now, if you can place yourself in an environment where you get moment by moment feedback on your brain state, that snaps you out of unhelpful patterns and habits straight away. So that's why for a lot of people who are passionate about hacking themselves and, and becoming a, a healthier, more wholesome high-performing human being, nearby feedback is an important part of it. And, and most yeah. of us who are, have been on this long path have at some stage engaged with biofeedback and come to realize it's one of the most simple, effective ways to accelerate your development as a human being. Well said. And uh, I, I, this is not a core part of what I do at Bulletproof. Like 40 Years of Zen is a separate thing. 
it's it's not a profit center. It's just one of those things that if, if someone's ready mm. and you want to radically accelerate what they they can do, I, I just and, don't know and, a better and, way. And, and do it when you're ready. Yeah, it's almost like you know you know have have a have a practice in heart coherence training. Mm -hmm. Have a practice in meditation. Yeah. Improve your physical energy yeah, and your, your food diet. Working, right? Yeah, you do take care of all of that, mm -hmm. and then when you've kind of got those to a high enough level, that's the time yeah. to make an investment. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Really, I appreciate it that you take time to send in questions via social media, or better yet, that you send it to us via our voicemail number. And uh, just go to Facebook, go to Twitter, and say, "Hey, this is something I'd like you to answer in your Q and A, and I'll do my very best to answer it for you." Hello, my name is Stephen McCain. I'm 41 years old, I'm a biohacker and a former Olympic gymnast. Finding Bulletproof, becoming now a coach, I can tell you that I started this process always being about myself, trying to make the most I could of myself. And now I look around in the world and you can't help but feel that I want to share this. So thank you Bulletproof for instilling in me something that I feel like I can contribute back to the world and that I feel like I have an obligation to do so that we can all feel better and be upgraded. Hi, I'm Emily Baker. I am not a health coaching type of person. I'm a deputy district attorney, so I deal all day with criminals. The shifts that have happened for me personally over the last two days have been amazing and I know when I leave this coach training not only will I be a better coach but I'm gonna be a better friend a better employee a better attorney a better mom a better wife and I'm gonna be a better person in society because I can go forward with an awareness of myself that is so powerful because this makes me feel amazing just like the bulletproof diet and the bulletproof coffee does but this feeds your soul in a way that the Bulletproof Diet feeds your body, and it's been so powerful. So well, my name is Arvid Eckenberg from Sonoma, California. I arrived enthusiastic and ostensibly very open. It didn't take long for various uh, prejudices and beliefs to assert themselves, and I found myself discouraged. I can't do this, but damn, if it's remarkable that uh, in just these two days, I uh, realized that it's not unattainable. In fact, it's not even that difficult. So, hi, my name's Allison Han. I'm from Chicago, and I am a teacher by trade. I've been in education for a while and I wanted to really expand what I do in the education field. And I've been totally transformed in the last couple days. Um, I thought that I would have to learn all of the science and be all absorbed into all of the knowledge and technology. And I actually found how much of the essence is really already inside me. And I think a lot of people found that there, that as long as you have this passion and that you have this awareness and this interest in making a transformation, that all of the other stuff will fall into place. And I'm very excited for this journey. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, my name is Christian Tucker. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I wasn't sure exactly what to expect when I came here, but truly these last two days have been uh, transformative, and I am really, really looking forward to more training and eventually implementing this and helping people. My name is Trudy Northcott. I'm from Auckland, New Zealand. So I showed up here two days ago um, hoping to find what was gonna help me to be a really good bulletproof coach to help everyone back in New Zealand. And you know what? I found it. These last two days, I can say 100% confidently, have been the best of my life, apart from giving birth to my daughter. <laughs> that was number one. But this has been an amazing experience. 
My name is Dan Sullivan and I'm from Maine. I'm a certified health coach and I really wanted to take my business above and beyond. I wanted to give my clients something something so much more than I've been giving them. Another approach and what Dr. Mark has been giving us has just been absolutely astounding. The energy in the room is so palpable. If you're thinking about coming to Bulletproof and becoming a coach, I would highly, highly recommend it. You're gonna enjoy yourself, you're gonna have a great time, and I'm just so thankful to be here.